Right now on News 3 this morning, Saturday, flags across the country, including this one over the White House, are flying at half staff this morning as the country wakes up to the death of former President George H.W. Bush. But first, we're tracking a winter storm headed our way, bringing with it rain and snow, how it could impact your weekend plans. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning, Saturday on this December 1st. I'm Josh Breider. We'll have more on the former president's life and legacy in just a moment. But first, we are tracking that major winter storm headed our way. Let's get right to meteorologist Chris Reese in the Weather Center with your first alert forecast. Chris, good morning to you. Good morning, Josh. We're watching this unfold on radars. We start to see the rain and snow line work its way towards the north. Now, most of the heavy snow will be farther towards the north and west of Madison, parts of central Wisconsin could get in on several inches of snowfall, but we've been tracking the storm as a whole as that cold air really begins to take over the western side of that throughout parts of I-80 in Nebraska. All of that will be moving towards the north and east as we go farther throughout the day, along with some warmer temperatures working our way as well. So here's future track going through the morning. We may start out uh, with some light rain initially, but that leading edge of precipitation we will have to watch closely for the potential for some snowflakes and freezing rain and sleet to mix in with that. But eventually I do expect the warmer air to take over heading into the overnight hours and then towards tomorrow we could see some of that snow return and come back towards the south and east and that could lead to some light snowfall accumulations. But winter weather advisories are in effect. Juno and Adams counties along with Crawford County and the winter storm warnings across parts of southeastern Minnesota that is for today and into tomorrow, the snow that will fall. We're talking potentially three to five inches up through there, but half a foot close to a foot of snow will continue to fall through parts of the central plains and the Midwest throughout today as the storm works its way on closer. So we have alert days for today, mainly for early this morning with what could be a wintry mix on this at the onset of the precipitation and then an alert day for Sunday with that mix changing over to some light accumulating snow. Let's go ahead and get you guys set up with traffic on this Saturday morning. Right now, this is the Beltline at Todd Drive. The fog starting to lift, which is good news. Roads are also just wet, not frozen. That is also some fantastic news. So far, we are not seeing any kind of issues. So if you plan on getting out this Saturday morning, I encourage you to take advantage of that before that wintry mix and then eventually all rain takes over for the rest of the day. Josh. Thank you, Chris. And now to that breaking news from overnight. Former President George H.W. Bush has died. The World War II hero was president during the collapse of the Soviet Union and the final months of the Cold War. The 94-year-old passed away overnight at his Houston home. Chris, Chris Martinez has more on his life and legacy. I, George Herbert Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. When George Herbert Walker Bush took the oath of office in 1989, he already had an impressive legacy. World War II hero, Texas oilman, director of the CIA and vice president, politics would dominate his life. Bush was born in 1924 in Milton, Massachusetts. On his 18th birthday, he enlisted in the Navy, becoming the youngest fighter pilot in World War II. During an air raid in the Pacific, he was shot down, a rescue famously captured on film. I knew that if something didn't pick me up, I would be uh, captured. Shortly after returning from the war, he married Barbara Pierce. They would have six children and 17 grandchildren. I think he's the wisest, smartest, most decent, uh, caring person I know. Bush studied at Yale University. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa in just two and a half years, but he left New England to make it on his own. He carved out his fortune in the wildcat oil fields of Texas. What a day. In the 60s, Bush turned to politics. He was elected to Congress in 1966 and became a power player in the Republican Party. Leaving the door open. In 1980, he ran unsuccessfully against Ronald Reagan for the GOP nomination, then agreed to be Reagan's running mate. He was Reagan's vice president for eight years before becoming the 41st president of the United States. I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States. During his one term in the White House, Bush played a key role in the reunification of Germany. He also took on Saddam Hussein for invading Kuwait, launching Operation Desert Storm, the first Gulf War. A new world order can emerge, a new era. Bush formed a coalition of 30 nations to liberate Kuwait in just six weeks, but he was criticized for not removing Iraq's defiant leader. 
After the war, the economy slowed down. Read my lips. No new taxes. Bush was forced to break that campaign promise and raised taxes. As the economy continued to sink, so did his approval ratings. And in 1992, he lost the election to Bill Clinton. In later years, the former rivals raised millions for victims of the tsunami in Southeast Asia and Hurricane Katrina. Bush remained active during retirement. He saw his oldest son become president, and another son, Jeb, served two terms as Florida's governor. He even went skydiving to celebrate his 80th, 85th, and 90th birthdays. Can't play golf anymore, but I still can jump out of a plane. But in his final years, Bush's health deteriorated, and he developed a form of Parkinson's that made it difficult to walk. He used a wheelchair during a 2011 visit to the White House when President Obama awarded him with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 2018, Bush was at his wife's side holding her hand when she passed at their Houston home. He called her the most beloved woman in the world, his devotion to her to the end, never failing. Chris Martinez, CBS News. This morning, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker is honoring the late president on Twitter, saying Bush was the first president he ever cast a ballot for, adding our country is better because of his service. Right now, people in Alaska are waking up to day one in what the governor says will be a long recovery process. A 7.0 magnitude earthquake rattled the state yesterday, followed by several aftershocks causing widespread damage. There have been no reports of injuries or deaths so far. A man who used to live in Madison felt the quake at his office just about 50 miles outside of Anchorage. Matt Hill says he's felt quite a few earthquakes, even sub-magnitude 4 and 5s, but he says it was immediately obvious that this one felt much stronger. Everyone in his office started running for the exit when the shaking started, and it continued for about a minute and a half. He says just trying to walk, he felt like he was about to fall over. Just trying to walk, it's like you're down at the Great Bay at about 5 to <laughs> it was crazy trying to get out because you're just swinging back and forth and vehicles were kind of tipping over and they didn't like fall over, but they're just kind of bouncing back and forth and it was, it was pretty wild. <laughs> I'm just shook again. They've been feeling aftershocks since. The UW Hospital says a hot water system may be to blame for five patients being diagnosed with a type of pneumonia, one who died this week. To avoid the bacteria causing Legionnaire's disease, officials say it's important to keep an eye on plumbing at home as well. It's spread through hot water mists like in a shower and is usually seen in people with low immune systems. According to the wa Madison Water Utility, bacteria can build in your water system if it's sitting stagnant. So running that water to make sure it turns over is important. We do a lot of work to make sure the water, when it gets to your home, is safe, it's disinfected, it's ready to go. Um, but once it gets there, you know, all that plumbing inside your home really needs to be taken care of. The Madison Water Utility also recommends getting a plumber to flush out your hot water system if you have any concerns. There's a new partnership in Rock County helping domestic abuse survivors and their pets get the care they need. The Beloit Domestic Violence Survivor Center and Humane Society of Southern Wisconsin are partnering to launch a program to foster pets of domestic abuse survivors. While many survivors leave pets behind when they escape domestic abuse, others do not leave abusive relationships for fear of having to leave their animals behind. The new program will offer foster homes for the pets of survivors for up to 90 days while abuse survivors work with the center's staff to set goals and create stability modeled off of a similar program in Dane County and is set to launch next month. 8.08 this morning, the Packers have to win their game tomorrow against Arizona if they want a chance at the playoffs. Green Bay is 0-6 on the road this season, most recently falling to the Minnesota Vikings last week. Now it is a must-win situation for the team from here on out. The Packers are about a two-touchdown favorite against the Cardinals. It would seem Sunday's weather forecast won't help the road team either with rain and snow, some wind and temperatures in the mid 30s. Aaron Rodgers would like that temperature even lower. Hell yeah, 15, 10, <laughs> 5, colder the better. You know, it's a West Coast team playing, not West Coast, but it's a Western United States team um, playing a noon central game, uh, colder the better. So we, and then we got a do dome team coming up colder the better. So I hope it gets even colder. I hope it snows and that's that's playing downhill for us. 
The Packers will return to Lambeau to play Arizona. Kickoff is set for noon tomorrow. For the first time in 20 years, Hall of Fame quarterback Brett Favre and a bunch of his Super Bowl 31 teammates will be back in Milwaukee. They're having a reunion autograph show at State Fair Park today. Admission is $7 at the door and then you have to pay for each autograph you'd like to get. Favre will be joined by 30 other members of the championship team, including Leroy Butler, Gilbert Brown and Antonio Freeman. Right now, the nationwide Christmas tree shortage is driving up prices across the country. Wisconsin's no different, and this year's weather could limit the tree selection even more for many Christmases to come. Jensen Trees in Verona had a little over an acre of young trees that got flooded with the heavy rainstorms this summer. Christmas trees are a longer-term crop, taking about 8 to 12 years to harvest. After the recession last decade and the challenging growing seasons due to weather, tree farms are left with a high demand and a low supply. Our seasons used to be six weeks long or from the day after Thanksgiving through up to Christmas. And we close now two, maybe three weeks in. So we just don't have as many trees and there's a lot more people. The Jensen's say Wisconsin actually has some of the best Christmas tree crop in the country. One of the more popular trees here are the Fraser firs. The average cost for a tree nationwide is 75 bucks. Madison police hope you'll consider helping donate tutors rather than toys to them this holiday season. Officers in the West District started the community reading project to send teachers and reading specialists to homes of at-risk kids. They say the idea came about after they saw crime rates spike with many of the perpetrators' kids. Officers say when kids are not given the tools and support to succeed, they start to disengage and lose interest in school, turning to crime. Madison police have a goal of paying for tutors for 30 kids, which will cost more than $30,000. The initial part of this program will be for those kids that we've had contact with in the police realm of this, and that we also know are behind in reading skills. As this program is funded more seriously, or we find a greater need for this, and we prove the success of it, we would encourage anyone that is behind in reading at the youth age to uh, be part of it. So far, police have raised $12,000. If you'd like to help this holiday season, the Madison Community Policing Foundation is now accepting donations online and by mail for a newly created community reading fund. Later this morning, Monroe Street will be bustling as the holiday glow on Monroe kicks off. It will start with a parade complete with the Badger Trolley. Santa will be there to take pictures with the kids. There's also a treasure hunt, a book sale, caroling, and snacks at shops along Monroe. That street was reopened in both directions for the first time last week after months of construction. The parade starts at 10 this morning at Hotel Red. The event runs until 5. And speaking of holiday festivities, there's a whole slew of places to get some unique handmade Christmas gifts this weekend. Today is the Fair Trade Holiday Festival at the Monona Terrace, featuring 50 vendors from 40 different countries. The Goodman Community Center is hosting its crafty fair in the Brassworks Building with unique Wisconsin-made gifts. And the Holiday Fest Arts and Crafts Fair will have handmade jewelry, baskets, pottery, and much more at the Warner Park Recreation Center. You can find details about all of these and other holiday fairs in our area on channel3000.com. Santa with his full-grown beard won't be the furriest one celebrating the holidays at an event this weekend. The Dog Den off Fish Hatchery Road is hosting Santa Paws. For $10, you, your family, or your pet can get a portrait with St. Nick. Proceeds from the event will go to SARS Promise, which supports canine and human cancer research. The photos start at 11 this morning. You are probably going to run into a whole bunch of Santas if you find yourself in downtown Madison this afternoon. If you happen to see a bunch of St. Nick's, Rudolph's, and Grinch's skipping around downtown, no one is trying to steal Christmas. It's just part of the Run Santa Run 5K. Runners will start, runners rather, will start at the Capitol Square at 3, then head east down Mifflin to North Baldwin before turning on to East Dayton and looping back to East Mifflin and around the Capitol. The Capitol Square will be closed between 1 and 6.30 and traffic won't be allowed to cross the route while runners are going through. Madison police will be in the area to help direct traffic during that race. 8.13 this morning, if you're heading out today or tomorrow, you're going to want to stay tuned. It's a busy morning in the News 3 Weather Center. Here's a live look over the Capitol this Saturday morning where we're expecting rain and snow and everything in between this weekend. 
Chris is tracking it all in his first lore forecast when News 3 This Morning Saturday continues. And it is a very windy morning out here on the News 3 First Alert Weather Center patio. If you can hear the wind behind me, we're going to see more of those wind gusts picking up as we go through the morning, especially as our next round of precipitation works its way on into the picture. We are tracking the next storm system to impact parts of the region. And here's weather track right now. You see the rain slowly working its way towards the north and in some cases mixing with just a little bit of snow. The harder the rain comes down, the more likely it will actually be that a few snowflakes may mix in with that. We'll track that through the morning. Here's the storm system as a whole. The bulk of the action falling over parts of central and eastern Nebraska right now. That'll be tracking towards northern Iowa and southern Minnesota along with central Wisconsin as we go through the day. For us down south here in south central Wisconsin, we are more likely to deal with rain. That's why those winter weather advisories are farther to the north. But we do have winter storm warnings for our friends to the west. And one of the interesting things about this storm is that typically these pull down cold air from Canada. At this time, the storm can't do that. So it actually has to create its own cold air. It does that with elevation. As the winds go up and they rise higher into the atmosphere, the air essentially cools off. And so on the back side of that, that's where you do have that cooler air that's producing snow. But on the eastern side of that, we are in a warm flow. And so that's what's going to help warm those temperatures today and lead to additional chances for rain. But by tomorrow, we will have chances for snow coming back into the picture along with the Canadian high bringing some cold air to help do that. Let's look outside right now. A little bit of light rain falling right now. It's also very foggy. The temperature 35 and we've been steady at 35 degrees for the past couple of hours. This should help. Those ground temperatures warm above freezing 37 in Janesville right now. That freezing line 
is along and northwest of the Dells, essentially 32 at the Dells, 30 as you work your way over towards Black River Falls. But here's how future track shows where the wintry precip may mix in on the leading edge before going over to all rain into the afternoon. And then here's the deal. We may even see some rumbles of thunder as we head into the overnight hours, but it's also going to be very windy folks. Sustained winds of 25 to 30 miles per hour. Wind gusts will be stronger here. Wind gusts right now. Platteville has a wind gust of 37 miles per hour. So do expect a very windy day. And then as we head into tomorrow, that cold air comes crashing back in, turning whatever rain is left over into some light snow and accumulations from that should be fairly light. We are talking essentially an inch or less around here, but a couple inches possible as you work your way to the north. That's why they do have the winter weather advisories there. But over the next seven to 10 days beyond this system, it is the 12 days of 20s, folks. We are going to be cold for a while with a rain chance, or sorry, snow chance rather, Thursday night and into Friday. Loving the sweater this morning, Chris. <laughs> well, thank you, Josh. I like the tie. It's December 1st. We might as well Christmas it up, right? 25 days of Christmas. <laughs> That's the right. favorite time of the year. All right, Chris, thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Time right now is 820 this morning. One of the biggest bands in the world right now is bringing their concert back to the big screen for an encore performance. And Will's in with your three things to watch this weekend. Stick around. This is News 3 this morning, Saturday.
And we do still have the cloud cover, the fog and the drizzle falling out of the sky right now. Temperatures holding steady though in the mid 30s, which is above freezing. If we can get the ground temperatures to do the same, then that'll mean less impact on whatever falls. Um, and hopefully nothing will be frozen there. But here's the freezing line starting to show up around the Dells through Watoma, going back through parts of Black River Falls and La Crosse as well. On the other side of that, temperatures are all above freezing, which is what we would like to see. However, still it's possible to get a little bit of a wintry mix. Here's the precipitation working into town right now, and you can see where that snow is trying to mix in on the leading edge of that before we eventually transition over to all rain. Here's how the models show that going through the afternoon and evening. Later on tonight, it's actually possible to see some rumbles of thunder around here before we quiet things on down. So we have a little bit of everything on the table, no matter what kind of weather you like, except for sunshine, unfortunately. But um, it's going to be a little bit of a windy and wild ride, along with a lot of rain going through tomorrow. Of course, we'll be keeping you guys up to date. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. The Lion King has long been considered one of the most popular Disney films of all time, and the upcoming live action looks like it's only going to reinforce that. When the first teaser trailer for the new film dropped a little more than a week ago, it racked up a massive 225 million views online in just 24 hours. That makes it the most viewed Disney trailer ever. Now the teaser is also the second most viewed trailer from any studio of all time, second only to Avengers Infinity War. In the new film, James Earl Jones reprises the role of King Mufasa and Donald Glover takes on the voice of Simba. The film hits theaters in July. If you're searching for a way to get into the holiday spirit this weekend, our Will Loper is here to help. Here are his picks for three things to watch. Hey, Dad. Hey, sweetheart. Where are you? Study group. I'm gonna go all night. Oh, one more thing. I want to know Dad. about the final you. New on home video this week is Searching. 911, what's your emergency? I'm calling to report a missing person. Okay, who is this regarding? My daughter. John Cho plays a man whose daughter goes missing, and he attempts to find her using her laptop and tracing her digital footprint. Did see her eat lunch alone. On Thursday? Every day. I don't think she's involved with anything serious. I know my daughter. We're not really that close. She has friends, right? Kind of. Then why did you invite her to study group? I'm trying to get into Berkeley next year. Searching is available to rent or buy everywhere now. I know my daughter. I'm trying to help you find my daughter. <laughs> the script I'm starting, it's about flowers. Oh. Nobody's ever done a movie about flowers before. So, so there are no guidelines. What about flowers for Algernon? Well, th that's not about flowers. Oh, okay. And it's okay. not a movie. Sorry, I never saw it. This week marks the 13 year anniversary of adaptation. To begin, to begin. How to start. I'm hungry. I should get coffee. Coffee would help me think. But I should write something first, then reward myself with coffee. Coffee and a muffin. Okay. Nicholas Cage stars as a screenwriter tasked with adapting a novel about orchids and finds it impossible. The, the book has no story. There's no story. All right, make one up. I mean, uh... Nobody in this town can make up a crazy story like you. You're the king of that. Oh, he also plays his twin brother, Donald, who's also writing a movie. I'm putting in a chase sequence. Uh, so the killer flees on horseback with the girl. The cops after them on a, on a motorcycle. And it's like a battle between motors and horses, like technology versus horse. Adaptation is available to rent or buy everywhere now. I've written myself into my screenplay. That's kind of weird, huh? Loyal readers. It's been 349 days since I said yes to the love of my life, Richard Bevan Charlton, King of Aldovia. And start getting in the mood for the holidays with A Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding, now streaming on Netflix. Somehow, through all this insanity, I'm still me, even though I'm about to become queen of a small country. Rose McIver plays Amber, who finds herself overwhelmed with wedding planning and the responsibilities of becoming queen. I can't see. We are looking for you, darling. It's perfect. I'm looking for something more contemporary. Aldovia has the traditions. Life in a fishbowl takes getting used to. You're going to do a brilliant job. A Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding, is available to stream on Netflix now. 
Could you turn to the left? Down? Right? Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch. And this is Will Noper for News 3 This Morning, Saturday. And from movies to music, a big screen encore for K-pop sensation BTS. The group's documentary, Burn the Stage, the movie, is heading back into theaters worldwide after a record-setting run. The film will also debut in India. Fans in the U.S. can see it this coming week. 8.28 right now, and there's more real news ahead this hour. We'll check in on the day's top stories next and tell you why Monroe Street businesses are preparing for a busy weekend. And if you're shopping for some holiday gifts, you might want to head to a local bookstore. That's where millions of Americans are turning for the first time in a decade. The news is back on News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Bookstores are booming. It's a big change from just a decade ago when store after store saw falling sales in smaller crowds. Why independent retailers are seeing surging sales this holiday season. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning. Saturday is just after 8.30 on this December 1st. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese is tracking the latest on the incoming winter storm. But first, here's what's making news this morning. Former President George H.W. Bush died overnight at 94 years old. He was the 41st President of the United States and the father of the 43rd. President Bush was the last veteran of World War II to serve as president, and during his tenure, he helped guide the nation and the world out of a four-decade Cold War that carried nuclear threats. Bush was preceded in death by his wife of 73 years, Barbara, in March. 
Funeral arrangements have yet to be announced, but this morning flags around the country are flying at half staff in his honor. There is a new partnership helping domestic abuse survivors and their pets get the care they need here in southeast Wisconsin. The Beloit Domestic Violence Survivor Center and Humane Society of Southern Wisconsin are partnering to launch a program to foster pets of domestic abuse survivors. While many survivors leave pets behind when they escape domestic abuse, others do not leave abusive relationships for fear of having to leave their animals behind. The new program is modeled off of a similar program in Dane County and is set to launch next month. Monroe Street will be bustling later this morning as the holiday glow on Monroe kicks off. It will start with a parade complete with a badger trolley. Santa will be there to take pictures with the kids. There's also a treasure hunt, a book sale, caroling and snacks at shops along Monroe. That street was reopened in both directions for the first time last week after months of construction. The parade starts at 10 this morning at Hotel Red and the event runs until 5. The Packers have to win their game tomorrow against Arizona if they want a chance at the playoffs. Green Bay is 0-6 on the road this season, most recently falling to the Minnesota Vikings last week. Now it is a must-win situation for the Pack from here on out. Kickoff against Arizona at Lambeau Field is set for noon tomorrow. 8.34 right now, and Chris, if you're heading up to Green Bay, it's going to be kind of an if you went out there when it comes to weather. That's right. They'll probably see some accumulating snow out there tomorrow. It's possible some of us could be seeing a few snowflakes now. Here is weather track showing the rain moving from south towards the north, and it's that leading edge of the precipitation that does have the best chance at spitting out a few snowflakes. So if you are seeing some snowflakes, please just let me know what you are seeing, where you live. Of course, eventually all this will transition over to rain, and we aren't expecting any major impacts. Temperatures above freezing at 35 right now. Very windy, though. Wind sustained at 17 miles per hour. As of now, gusts are even higher than that across parts of the state this morning. But here are those temperatures. The freezing line right around the Dells to the points north and west. The farther south and east you are, the warmer your temperatures will be. We're at 37 for our friends in Rock County right now, and so that does mean that the impacts of any kind of frozen precipitation will certainly be on the lesser side. But here we go through the morning. We'll see that brief mix transitioning over to rain as things move farther towards the north. We'll even get a little bit of a break. Then later on tonight, another round of showers and thunderstorms. Yes, potential thunderstorms will move through the area. They won't be strong, but don't be surprised if you do hear a rumble of thunder or two. But the snow, at least the accumulating snow, should be mainly to the north. That's where they do have winter weather advisories until 12 o'clock tomorrow, Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. My pleasure. A new initiative is aiming to recruit more veterans for Wisconsin's workforce. The state is spending almost $2 million on the Mission Wisconsin campaign, attracting military personnel when they leave the service. More than 45 Wisconsin employers are expressing interest in meeting with and potentially hiring veterans for work. We have some emotional video this morning from SSM Health St. Mary's Hospital. Staff members taking part in their first honor walk, lining the hallways and singing as an organ donor heads into surgery. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. How incredible is that? This video was posted on the hospital's Facebook page. The hospital wrote, This is his honor walk, a moment when friends, family, and staff line the halls as a hero makes their way to save lives. What a great way to wake up this morning. This holiday season, a growing number of shoppers are heading to a familiar place, but one they haven't turned to in years, independent neighborhood bookstores. After being nearly wiped out a decade ago, small bookstores are now booming. Here's CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger. Dane Neller, the owner of Shakespeare and Company, just opened his third indie bookstore. Bookstores are back, and they're back in a big way. And is proving the naysayers wrong. I'm not given the hyperbole, I'm not. It was a record breaking for us. This Manhattan sanctuary is part of a resurgence of independent bookstores nationwide. Here, customers can stumble upon a new author or linger over a latte. The book cover's being bound now. While a special machine can print a book in three minutes. There it is. If it's not in stock. The rebound comes after years of competition from deep discount superstores and online behemoth Amazon, 
which together turned small shops into an endangered species. According to the American Booksellers Association, the number of independent bookstores fell by approximately 40 percent between the mid-90s and 2009. They have recovered some of those closures, and this year, sales are up more than 5 percent over a year ago. Well, can I help you find anything no. else? I think I'm going to pick one of these, too. The localism movement has been a driving force. <laughs> Customers are increasingly spending in their neighborhood stores. I'm not trying to compete with online retailers. I'm trying to compete on what I do best. Oren Tyker is the CEO of the American Booksellers Association. When you come into a store like this, and you don't know what you want, and you browse these shelves, you're going to find books that you didn't know existed. If you are engaged in your community, curating your content, having people work the store that are knowledgeable and passionate about books, um, yeah, there absolutely is a formula for success. That specialized service, combined with a sense of community, is putting the indie bookstore back on consumers' holiday shopping lists. Jill Schlesinger, CBS News, New York. 839 this morning. Are you looking for something to do this weekend? Well, we've got you covered in the weekend 608. But first, there is a month jam-packed with fun activities for kids of all ages happening at the Overture. We'll continue our Kids in the Rotunda series when News 3 This Morning Saturday returns.
Kids of the Rotunda is a popular program at the Overture Center helping connect children with the arts. We highlight each month's performances on the first Saturday of every month. And joining us now to talk about what is happening in December is Mary Rose. Good morning, Mary. Thanks for coming in. Hi, thanks so much for having me back. So talk a little bit about this program. We've had you on the program before, but you have a couple months under your belt so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kids in the Rotunda, for those who haven't been able to join us yet this season, is a really wonderful free performance series offered most Saturdays, October through April. Uh, show times are 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. Uh, the 1 p.m. show is also American Sign Language interpreted, and it's a wonderful opportunity for kids to come out and learn about the arts. And why is that it's so important here in our community to get the kids involved? Yeah, so this is a good stepping stone for kids to start exploring their creativity in a really kid-centered, fun, comfortable environment. And it's also a great place for families to get to know one another and to nurture the parent-child relationship in a really fun environment. And we also display a lot of different types of arts. So we have juggling and dance and music. And we also try to highlight a lot of different cultures as well. So it's a great place for children to explore uh, cultures they might not be familiar with. Awesome. Well, we've got some good ones coming up this month. Talk a little bit about what people can expect on the incoming Saturdays. Yeah, so today we are welcoming local musical talent Yid Vicious. Um, they're a lot of fun. It's a big band, and they will be helping us celebrate Hanukkah and the winter season with some Yiddish beats. And after the 11 a.m. performance today, we are actually premiering a Brazilian cartoon. Ooh. So visiting artist and scholar Vivian Huguero, who's currently working at UW-Madison, is premiering a show here at Kids in the Rotunda, first time ever. Ever, and next year it will be aired nationally in Brazil. So I highly recommend everybody come out to the 11 o'clock show and stay for that premiere. And then on December 8th, we are welcoming back Kalanjali School of Indian Dance, and they are one of our highlights every year. Uh, they bring about 30 to 40 student dancers who sh will be showing Southern Indian dance with full traditional costumes. So it's a really beautiful display. And after that performance, we invite families to head over to Madison Public Library uh, at the children's room. They can do crafts and read some books related to that day's performance. And then on December 15th, we are going to be celebrating in true Wisconsin style with six-time Hall of Fame award-winning polka player Mike Schneider and pint-sized polkas. So that's going to round out our season. And after that performance that day, we're inviting families to get active with MSCR's Fit to Go. All right, you guys are staying busy. We'll get this up on channel3000.com if you want to learn more. Mary, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Stay with us. There's more news for this morning Saturday right after this. If you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture on TV.
Well, I just took a peek outside on the patio. We've got mainly rain coming down, a little bit of sleet and a few snowflakes mixed in that rain. But the bigger story when you come in from outside is just how windy it is. The wind today has a little bit of a roar to it. Here's some of the wind gusts that we have seen this morning. So far, 24 miles per hour in Madison. Pottville had a wind gust of 32 miles per hour right now, 28 miles per hour down in Janesville. We're going to see more of this as we go throughout the day. If anything, we're only going to see those wind gusts pick up as well. Sustained winds coming out of the east and northeast at 17 miles per hour for us. 18 down at James Milvin Road. You've got sustained winds at about 20 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour as you work your way over towards Platteville. And then here's the radar. You see that leading edge of precipitation starting to work its way on in, mixed with just a little bit of sleet and snow. But for the most part, temperatures are warm enough. I do think we will see rain continue to take over with that as that continues used to work its way on north along with warming temperatures. But the bigger story, here's the storm system as a whole bringing some pretty heavy and wind driven snows to parts of Nebraska. All of this going to be moving into Iowa and southern Minnesota today. So if you're traveling up that way, be prepared for some pretty nasty weather. Uh, winter storm warnings, not severe thunderstorm, but winter storm warnings throughout Iowa through parts of northwestern uh, or throughout Nebraska, parts of northwestern Iowa and southeastern Minnesota as well. We have winter weather advisories over Wisconsin for what this will do for those counties to our north. The system creating its own cold air instead of tapping into Canadian cold air. But in the meantime, we're on the warm flow of that. So that's why things are going to transition over to a period of all rain for us here in the southern half of the state. As this low moves towards the north and east tomorrow, eventually we get in on some of that colder air. That'll transition things over to a period of snow, then high pressure. Our friend high pressure comes out of Canada. That's going to reinforce another cold pattern as we go through the next several days. But again, we are not struggling getting rid of that colder air right now. 35 degrees. That's the good news. Still gusty winds coming out of the east at 17 miles per hour. But that freezing line continues to push farther to the north and west, which is what we want to see going through today, allowing all rain to take over into the afternoon. And then tonight, don't be surprised if you hear a few rumbles of thunder coming around as well. This is truly a dynamic system. Once it pulls on, though, we will watch the colder air come back on the backside. That's going to transition things over to a period of snow tomorrow. Not not a lot of snow in terms of accumulation. We are generally talking less than an inch around this part of the country, but behind the storm system, temperatures do fall. We have the next 12 days with temperatures. <laughs> I say 12 days for the 10 days of, or 12 <laughs> days of Christmas, but we'll see about eight to 10 days of temperatures that will be in the 20s beyond that. So yeah, you know, your sweater might be cool and all. We got Christmas <laughs> socks on. All right, I have mine. I'll post them on social media, but yep, we've got to keep it going. December 1st, we are getting yes. festive, and there's a lot to get festive in the weekend 608 this weekend. Here's a look at what's going on in and around town. The Christmas season is off to a strong start. In the music category, we have some great options for you. This first one brings together three powerful groups, the Madison Youth Choir, the Mount Zion Gospel Choir and the Madison Symphony Orchestra. It's time for the Madison Symphony Christmas. You can see this one all weekend long at the Overture and start practicing for the audience Christmas Carol sing-along. And even this time of year is a great time to visit the Overt Botanical Gardens. This weekend kicks off a month of holiday concerts every Sunday afternoon in December. The first concert tomorrow will feature folk, jazz, Celtic, and even Latin music to get you in the spirit of the season. The shows all start at 2 o'clock. You can't let the weekend go by without doing a little bit of shopping, of course. You can, you can go right to the source of some of our state's most talented artists and get one-of-a-kind gifts at the Crafty Fair. This event takes place only three weekends a year, and this weekend it will be both today and tomorrow at the Brass Works Building at the Goodman Center. Handmade kids' shoes, coffee mugs, and soaps are among the unique items up for sale. And something I've always wanted to take, but here's an idea for a family outing later this morning. Take the kids to Madison Central Library to kick off your Saturday. Join award-winning children's book author and illustrator Jan Brett as she reads The Snowy Nap, starring <laughs> Hedgie the Hedgehog. The event is free and it starts at 10. And how about heading to Stoughton to see Almost a Christmas Carol? It's a delightful holiday show filled with singing, dancing, heartfelt moments, and lots of holiday cheer as a group of students try to find the true meaning of the holidays. There are two shows at 1.30 and 7.30 today inside the Soton High School Auditorium. As always, you can get this month's Madison Magazine for all of the best in the Madison area.
It is 8.53. Be sure to stick around for News 3 this weekend. Tonight at 6 and 10, we're checking out the holiday festivities from that Santa run around the square to Monroe Street's first big holiday celebration since reopening. But first, we'll have an updated look at your forecast when News 3 This Morning Saturday returns. I was like... Definitely a weekend you're going to want to stay tuned to the weather. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We have a little bit of everything except for sunshine on the table, starting out with a wintry mix going over to rain, ending as light snow tomorrow. If that doesn't make you have a little bit of whiplash, then the cold temperatures to follow certainly will. We are going up close to 40. Then beyond Monday, we are in the 20s as far as the eye can see. So yeah, a wintry pattern taking over the picture for a while. There is a weak chance for some flurries Thursday night and into Friday. But before we even talk about that snow chance, we've got to focus on what's coming our way right now. Again, I'm not expecting any major impacts in the Madison area, uh, but the further north you go, the more accumulation of snow that may fall, especially around Juneau and Adams counties and then points to the north and west. All right, something to watch, Chris. Yep. Thank you, and thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning from 630 to 8. In the meantime, have a fantastic Saturday. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.